Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and welcome to 3.9.1, which also brings Invictus Week, which means that we are going to have a bunch of ships that you can actually go see and rent. Um, you also have some cool hollow viewers that are going to allow you to actually uh, take a look at some ships that are currently in production. But most importantly, what we have, and the purpose of this video, is the Javelin is now flying around. Now, it's a little bit limited. You just see it from the outside. It is in flight. It will actually engage you if you have a crime stat, and most of the time you die almost immediately, as you would expect. Um, that being said, the, what you have is the Invictus Fleet, which you can find on the star map. Uh, it is flying around between the different planets, primarily going from Art Corp to Microtech, then to Hurston. Uh, it actually will dock at some special uh, docking ports that are available on the stations now. Um, so essentially you're going from uh, Tressler to Everest to Bajini. Um, now, when the ships arrive, you will actually see some fireworks go off if you are kind of in your ship or if you're just standing on the pad waiting. Um, you cannot board these ships. Now, when they're in flight, you can get as close as you want to them, which is pretty cool. They don't fire on you, assuming you're a good player. Um, that being said, once they actually end up at their docking locations, you cannot fly too close or autopilot will pull you away. Um, the fleet is going to consist of a Javelin, two Idrises, and probably six to eight F8 Lightnings. Um, but the purpose of this video is really going to be talking about the Javelin. Now, if you're already at one of the orbital stations, um, you do have the ability to take an elevator from the station uh, to the security ports. Um, you will notice that they are labeled something along the lines of security dock A, B, or C. Uh, if you want to see the Javelin, they are typically going to be at uh, dock C. If you want to see an Idris, go to A or B. That being said, um, you know, you can see here the Javelin is arriving, fireworks are going off, I'm flying pretty close to it, it's all safe and good. So let's go ahead and skip ahead to where this docks, I'm going to park pretty close and we're going to EVA out and take a look at it in a little bit more detail. So here we are actually taking a look at the Javelin and it is a magnificent beast. Uh, when this ship was initially launched it had a 345 meter length, it ended up being 480 meters as far as the last update was concerned. So what we see is about a 33-38% to 38 increase in size overall. Um, it is really well designed. Now when we look at the weapons on this ship, it is bordering on the absurd. Um, you're going to see me flying up against one of the STS turrets. There are two of them on this ship. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. Um, what's interesting here is that on the original specs for this ship, you had two size 7 STS turrets, which basically came with two size 7 guns. That being said, what was delivered <laughs> looks like it's actually going to be um, two turrets that have size 9 or 10 guns. I can't really tell. Um, you can see me zooming out here to try and give you perspective. Um, it, they're essentially, this turret with the weapons on it are like the size of a Vanguard or a Constellation. I mean, they're huge. They are absurdly large. Now, as we continue to move forward away from the STS turrets, you're going to see that there are some ASA turrets. Uh, initially, these were ATA. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be um, as far as that acronym is concerned. But ASA is going to be an anti-ship artillery weapon, which is designed to be kind of laser cannons um, that are surrounding the ship to protect it against threats. What we kind of got here is something a little bit different. It looks like we have like a broadside capability. You have three turrets that have what look to be, uh, at least based on the kind of stats that are pulled from the data files, size 7 bearing laser cannons. Design-wise, they don't match that. Um, the turrets that are on the STS turrets, or the weapons on the STS turrets, those look like they are the bearing series. Now, the bearing series is inherently a little bit confusing because it is the exact same model, it's just scaled up in size. So if you see one, you can't really put a size on it until you have something to compare it to, or a real data file that will tell you one way or another. Um, again, the design here doesn't look like the M9As or the M8As or whatever it is, the size 7s there. So I'm not sure how accurate the data files actually are. What you do see on the six turrets that are actually on the sides of the ship are two Revenant Ballistic Gatling Guns. What I believe these to be are going to be your point defense system for this ship. 
this ship is going to be a ready-made target for um, torpedoes or missiles. So you need the ability combat to combat that to some degree, and I think that's why you see these kind of point defense systems on these turrets. Um, I don't think these are going to be player-controlled weapons, even though they are unmanned turrets. I think these are going to be automated systems that just have convenient placement, but we'll have to see how that all plays out. Uh, I've heard speculation that these turrets are actually uh, railguns. There are some indicators on it that look like railguns, but the stats is a little bit confusing, so I'm not really sure what they end up being. Um, based on the barrel, I don't think I necessarily think these are railguns. They may be, and I, frankly, I kind of hope they are because that would be pretty cool. Um, but that being said, I don't think that's necessarily what we are going to see. So as far as the overall weaponry on this ship, um, <laughs> again, it borders on the absurd. You have um, 13 uh, a ASA turrets, um, which are basically going to be six along the sides on the top, which we just looked at. You have three that are on the belly, kind of down the center line of the ship. And then you have forward-facing turrets um, with two that are going to be on the belly facing forward on short, uh, starboard and port. And then you have two that are on the top doing the same thing. Then what you have is the STS turrets. Um, again, what you were initially supposed to have was uh, two, two size 7 weapons on them. Now you basically have more than doubled the firepower on your STS capability. Um, giving you four on top and bottom of a size 9 or 10 laser. As far as I can tell, this ship is a powerhouse, <laughs> and there's not really any other way to put it. Now, as we continue to EVA around this, um, there's a couple things to point out. Um, here on the underside of the ship, what we have here is the cargo lift. Um, this ship actually has the ability to carry 5400 SCU of cargo, and this is going to be your primary way to put it in. Now, as we come around the top of this ship, this is where we start seeing things like the ability to actually carry another um, fighter on board. You do have a small um, hangar that's available here. Now, based on the original descriptions, it was really designed to be, um, you know, carrying, you know, single seat fighters. Now, the size here is a little bit complicated because it's a strange shape. It looks like you may have the ability to bring something, you know, vanguard sized because the wings tuck in. Um, but it, again, it's hard to get a sense of scale right here because the weapons are as large as they are. You can't get all that close with a fighter. Um, so I think it's a little bit TBD on what you can actually put on board. Now, aside from this, um, on top you have the uh, some like uh, lifeboats. You have some uh, evacuation pods. Um, you have a docking collar, and there you can see on the starboard and port you actually have the forward-facing weaponry. Those are the size seven laser uh, bearing laser cannons. And again, you have kind of piers of those that are sitting on the belly of the ship that actually give you a lot of forward-facing weaponry. What you see on the javelin is is not a lot of protection on the rear. Now, you have the remote turrets that are the STS turrets that can really face any direction. Um, so I think you may end up having the ability to cover your rear. Um, but everything really is forward facing. And you see that even further reinforced here where you have two torpedo tubes um, where you actually have the ability to fire 32 size 12 torpedoes. Now, for those of you that are Polaris owners, it's worth noting that what you have is two torpedoes that shoot larger size torpedoes. On the Polaris, you have size 10 torpedoes, so it's two sizes down, but you have the ability to fire four of them at the same time. So it really is more of a torpedo boat. This one can probably end up doing damage to larger um, vessels, which is an important trait. Um, that being said, you're not going to be able to pump out as many torpedoes as fast as a Polaris can, so that DPS calculation is going to be a little bit complicated when you get to it. Now, as far as the bridge is concerned, you can't really see into it right now. There's been some reports of people being able to glitch into it. I haven't been able to do that at this point, and I think that was more of an Evocati issue that was in place. Um, that being said, the ship overall is massive. There's a lot of capability. Um, if you actually take your character in EVA next to like one of the maneuvering thrusters, for example, it is a staggering size. You have engines all over the place, more than you would actually expect when you compare it to the uh, wreck that's on Daymar. Um, so this ship is just one that I'm really excited for. What you're looking at on the screen right now is a set of rails. Um, and ultimately what happens is, is you have the STS turret that um, deploys. So I think when you're actually in flight and not using it, it kind of tucks behind the back of the ship. So it's not actually kind of obstructing you know, views and it's something you can ram into other things. 
Um, the placement's a little bit strange because it got an improvement. It's not tucked behind the back nacelles anymore, which is great. But when you look at it next to the bridge, it looks like it's actually an issue as far as actually potentially hitting the bridge. I think there's a little bit more work they're going to be doing to make sure that there's not collision issues, but this ship will also probably be smart enough to not allow you to actually shoot your own ship because we've seen that behavior on a lot of other vessels. Overall, the Javelin is the meanest ship in the game. Yes, there is a Bengal carrier, <laughs> but again, you may find a derelict. You're going to have to you know, fix it up. It's not persistent. This is the largest player-owned vessel in the game, and I think it's really showing that they're trying to make this the meanest thing that you can possibly have, and I think we have that. It's a really exciting ship. It's not only just because I own one, because it's just a really impressive vessel, and I'm really impressed with the event so far because it's an interesting tech demo if nothing else to be able to bring this ship into the game and showcase it now keep in mind this ship has a crew size that's going to range you have you know 13 turrets which means you have at least 13 gunners on your ship you have two uh, remote turrets so you're up to 15 you need a pilot you probably need um, other players in engineering and pilots for your uh, fighters that you have on board so what you're talking about is basically half of a current server on this ship in particular so what you have is a ship that's really not sustainable in the model that we have today so while it is mean and while it is cool and while it's really exciting we really need to see what's coming next from CIG because until we actually have that in place, this ship is essentially useless and that probably applies to the Idris as well. So there you have it. That's our first look at the Javelin actually in the engine, in the game and something for us to see. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Otherwise, hopefully you guys are excited like I am. Enjoy Invictus Week. Stay tuned for a lot more coming soon. Consider supporting me on Patreon and have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care.